For the last three decades, one man more than any other has been the scourge of the orthodontic establishment. And he lives here, in this slightly unexpected castle in the depth of rural Sussex. His name is John Mew, and he's an experienced dentist. But he also had orthodontic treatment when he was young, and he's blunt about what it did to him. I'm a perfect example of why you shouldn't take teeth out. In Britain, the most common treatment for children with overcrowded and uneven teeth is to use fixed braces, often accompanied by extractions. Mew believes that's wrong. Instead, he argues for an alternative approach. And there is, he says, a way to compare the results. Here, for example, we have a pair of twins. Both of them had irregular teeth, but Quinton, the one below, was more severe. I treated him while the Ben, his brother, with a milder problem, was treated by a traditional orthodontist. Although Ben and Quentin Creed are identical twins, their treatment wasn't. Like tens of thousands of other British children, Ben had four teeth extracted and the rest braced. Quentin, on the other hand, was treated by John Mew without extractions. Instead, he used a technique designed to expand his jaw to make room for the teeth. What's happened to their faces? Well, you can see that Ben's face is slightly flatter and slightly longer, whereas Quinton has more forward growth, which I think perhaps gives him a slightly better profile. Today, in their early 20s, the twins are happy that at least people can now tell them apart. But Ben, who received the traditional treatment, does feel John Mew's approach would have left him with a better result. I think in some respects it elongated my face. Because of the extractions, I'd, uh, I've got a smaller bite size, and so the uh, width of my mouth is smaller. So therefore the smile isn't as uh, pronounced. Well, there's a clear comparison between us as twins for the two different methods and it's, it's evident which method seems to work in, in favour of the orthodontistry method of Dr. Mews, really. All orthodontists and all dentists I talk to know that faces are, from time to time, damaged. They don't attempt to deny that, but I think they are worried that it might put patients off treatment. Mews' argument goes like this. A normal upper arch should look like this. It forms that way because the tongue rests in the area between the upper teeth. There, it counteracts the pressure of the cheeks, which would otherwise push the upper arch of the jaw in. But if a child sucks his thumb or breathes through his or her mouth for any reason, then the tongue drops from the top of the mouth and the upper arch can get pushed in. Nor is that the end of the process, according to Mew and the critics. They say the narrowed upper arch has a knock-on effect on the lower jaw, forcing it further back and down. And it's that, they say, which gives the appearance that front teeth stick out too far. The critics' treatment is based on changing the posture of the jaws and expanding them to fit the teeth. Brentwood in Essex and dentist Francois Rossau, another critic of British orthodontics, welcomes eight-year-old patient Katie and her mother. Hi, Katie. Hello, Katie. Katie has a very common problem, uneven teeth which appear to stick out at the front. But, says Rossau, Katie shows why you must look not just at the appearance of the teeth, but the jaw as a whole. I'll do this simple test. I'll just cover Katie's face there. I'll bring the paper down slowly up to about there and if you look at that do you s can you see anything wrong with her face does it look as if her top lip is sticking yeah, out too her, far her face looks absolutely fine and, and her top lip is not sticking out it looks exactly right so that's not where the problem is then if we look at a full face see that lower jaw is too far back but the trouble is that traditional orthodontics would actually say well she's got sticking out teeth it's crowded so we'll take some out we'll move that back that's what normally happens. The danger is if we pull the top teeth back, that will lock the lower jaw even further back. Another dentist to come out against the mainstream is Mike Fennell. 
and in his case, the evidence was very close to home, his son David. Ten years ago, on the advice of an orthodontist, he extracted four of David's teeth. But when David's brace came off, he extracted four of David's teeth. But when David's brace came off, he began to worry. I'd catch glimpses of him from certain angles when his lips looked as if he was an old man with no dentures in. I felt really quite upset at times because I'd recommended to him that he have the treatment. In fact, I hadn't recommended and I told him he was going to have this treatment. Even here, though, where it all began, some people are beginning to question whether there might be a darker side to the Hollywood smile. One respected Los Angeles orthodontist who has lost faith in the traditional approach is William Hang. I have records on some of my own patients uh, several years after they've had treatment, as much as 10 and 15 years, and uh, I've seen that their teeth change, they're unstable, and I've seen their faces change. The key to the alternative approach is a piece of equipment designed to change the posture of the mouth and jaws and expand the jaw's arch, known generally as a functional appliance. Hang uses a particular adaption invented by Mew, which he calls a postural appliance, which also encourages patients to keep their mouths shut. This is the appliance, and if Megan were to try to bite into it, these little flanges touch her. If she lets her jaw fall back, these remind her to keep her jaw forward. Effectively so that she grows as she should have done. Exactly, exactly. And she has to keep her teeth together at rest. So how's it been, Megan? You're looking forward to getting rid of it? Yeah. Look at that. You've got a Hollywood smile already. <laughs> it's a lovely smile. <laughs> John Mew tells how when he wrote one article outlining his treatment approaches for the respected journal Dental Practice, the editor replied, Beautifully reasoned as ever, it makes good and sensible reading. Nevertheless, it pains me to tell you we cannot publish. The reasons are the disgraceful uproar from your colleagues every time something from the Mew stable appears in print. It's all wrong, I know, but we have to be a little circumspect, being essentially a commercially backed organization. Indeed, this code issued by the General Dental Council is quite clear. It says, A dentist must explain to the patient the treatment proposed, the risks involved, and alternative treatments. Yet, the dispatches survey found that 75% of orthodontic patients were not warned that the treatment might not work, let alone that it could cause long-term damage and 88% were not told about alternative treatments.